it's a flip thing as we talk about as we get deeper into mind move manifest when we talk about viewing it from how you would like to see it too versus like how can i send this in a way so that i can you know get in contact with the person it almost kind of pushes it away a little bit and then when you go well what what would i hear right now that would say I, I, yeah i want to know more about that or yeah i do think about that you know get this curious Albert Einstein yeah. said one of the most powerful forces in, in the whole universe is mystery. So leading somebody, that's why we go into binge watches. Cause like you watch, we're watching stranger things again for the second time. And they end every episode with like, Oh, you got to know what's going on. So that's <laughs> a strong thing too. So right, right on, brother, you know, give yourself the thumbs up for taking action. Right on. Yeah, I just took it as, you know what, I could just improve that text message. I didn't get offended, didn't get hurt, didn't get pissed off. Just like, you know what, okay, that was a bad text message. Next, I'll send yep. out another one to someone else. Exactly, exactly. So. Right on, man. Well, thank you for sharing that, Eric. Thank you guys for sharing your wins. Hey, any questions that you guys have, uh, just write them down. And because I know this stuff causes thinking, that's exactly what we do here. It really causes deep thinking, which causes us to uh, you know, want to ask questions or, you know, we relate to one another that way. So capture that stuff because that's some of the most, you know, juicy, best moments here at our M3 family and what we do here. So be sure and capture it and we will share it all in the end and take part in that. I'm going to get going with this lesson right now. And we call this lesson the secret genie. This is a, a really a profound moment in what I share with you is information that comes through Bob Proctor. And the secret genie was a really profound moment for Bob Proctor in his life. And, you know, you're going to discover why they call it the secret genie, because when you understand what it really is, you understand that it's the key for getting whatever it is that you want. And we're using the genie all the time. That's the key. We're just not using the genie in a way to get what it is that we want. So I want you to remember this always. Love is the answer, man. We're going to be viewing our results. We're going to be viewing our results more toward the end of this lesson. But remember, our results are separate from us. It's, re it's a reflection of programming that we have inside of us that's causing us to do something. And when we understand our mind, we really understand where that programming is that's causing us to do that. But it's not who we are. So we, re we always look at our results indifferently because they're subject to change. The moment we understand how to change our programming, we automatically understand how to change our results. So we understand we're not our results. Always love you. Love you first as you look at this type of stuff and then love where it is that you're going with this. Things are neither negative or positive. I want you to wrap your head around that. Things are neither, you know, we labeled the magnet positive and negative, but that doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's just something that we've called it. It's attraction and, you know, pushing away, repelling. So things are neg negative, neither negative or positive or good or bad. But thinking, which is what we're all doing in one way, shape or form, makes those things so. When our thinking's in harmony with what we want, yeah, we call it positive or whatever. So think about that. Pretty powerful, right? Look at your results indifferently, guys. So your world is a living expression of how you are using and have used your mind. And that's really, really something. The more you get into this and you start to understand that there's no way that you're experiencing this world other than inside of your mind. Anything that you're viewing out here is actually something you're taking in here. It might be coming in through your eyes in the form of light waves. It might be coming in through your ears in the form of sound waves or vibration that we're feeling through our senses. But all of it is experienced up here. And it's always coming from mind. Our mind is the, the, it's the wonderful, beautiful gift we've been giving and by, given. And by the way, I want you to know you're not your mind. You're that beautiful being behind that mind that's running it. But that's the gift that we've been given to experience our world and not just experience it, but to direct it, to change it, to do what it is that you want. It's an awesome, awesome gift. That's what we're learning about right here in The Secret Genie. 
This graphic illustration of the mind we refer to as the stick person. You're going to see who that is here in just a minute. It is without question the most valuable idea I've gained in close to 50 years. Bob said that actually 10 years ago. So now we're talking about 60 years and he still says this. The most valuable idea I've gained in close to 60 years of intensive research into the workings of the mind. Bob has spent time with therapists, uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, you know, however you want to refer to those people that study the mind in a very deep way. And he's actually taught them so much about what they teach uh, by what we're sharing here. And the beauty in what we do here it, M3 Mastermind is, is that we break it down to the ridiculously simple because we're taking this stuff in, not from the point of view that we want to share it and go, okay, look at this awesome thing that I can say. And I did this in kinesiology, you know, oh, you can repeat this paragraph verbatim, you know, ah, don't I have lots of intellect and power? And it isn't about that. You know, people don't resonate with that. What we do is we take this information that's so powerful that can change your life and we reduce it down to, it's just so simple because we only have one goal here. It's to understand ourselves and our mind in a way so that we can start to use that and use this stuff around us so that we can get what we want. And really when we're seeking what we're seeking, we're all seeking the same thing. It's more joy, more love, more happiness, less suffering. That's really what it is. We all have different paths to that. But along those paths, we're using our mind and these wonderful faculties we've been given. And because we don't understand how to use those things, we wind up in struggle and frustration. We take it down to the bare bones, simple, ridiculously simple way that you can take this information, internalize it, and apply it right now in your life to start getting results that you want. That's why Bob loves it. And that's why I fell in love with it too. So why did Bob's life change? That's the big question behind all of this. When Bob was 26 years old, somebody reached out to him in a real honest way, just said, hey, you know, your life's not really going so well. He was four, he was $6,000 in debt. It was 1961. And uh, he was only earning $4,000 a year. So he was in debt way more than he was earning per year. He didn't have any uh, means of getting out of debt. He was trying to keep the debt collectors off of the phone. And he was just frustrated all the time. He had a bad attitude and he was sick physically. He said he was always having a cold and sick. For some reason, Bob took what this guy said to heart. His name was Rafe Stanford. And he said, Bob, things aren't working the way that you're doing them. Why don't you try my way? And what he did, he gave Bob the book, Think and Grow Rich. He told Bob, read that book and do exactly what this man says. He said, this man spent Napoleon Hill writing that book. He spent most of his life writing this book and researching it. Don't you think it would be a good idea for you to spend time reading it? Well, Bob did that. Not only did he do that, he read that book every day. And not only that, he's read that book every day since 1961, still today. And at the age that he is, 87 years old, he still reads that book every day. That's how profound it is to him. So what happens for Bob in a year, he, or he sets a goal for himself and his life changes just like that. He goes from making $4,000 a year, he immediately goes to $175,000 a year, which is a lot of money in the early 60s. But he wasn't done with that. A few years later, he went past a million dollars a year and he's never stopped and never looked back. But the thing that got Bob, he couldn't understand what he'd done. He had changed his life in such a short amount of time. So what he did, he did what he knew best to do is he took that book and he gave it to people. He was also listening to a recording of that book. He would drive around in his car and listen to it on a record player back then and a battery operated record player. He gave the record to people. So what happens? Nothing changed for those people. They didn't change the way he did, and he couldn't figure out what it was that had happened. Well, what you're experiencing today with the secret genie was the answer that Bob finally found. It says, seek and ye shall find. And he was seeking for nine and a half years to find this answer. And he found this answer in a guy named Leland Val Vandewal. Leland produced an image of what we call our mind. That's what's bringing order to us. 
And once Bob understood what this was, it took everything that he was looking at and seeking in life and made it significant right in that moment. And he says in that moment, he knew what he was going to do for the rest of his life. And he, he did. He dedicated his life to sharing this information with people. So one of the big things that we take away from this is an understanding of, as I said before, you are not your mind. Mind is something that controls vibration that's going on in the world. Everything is vibration and you use your mind. It's like a supercomputer if you want to look at it that way. Whatever we can do to think about how or what is mind, but you use your mind. But a deeper question is understanding who are you? Because you're not what's programmed into your mind. As I said, you're not your results. You're not what's programmed into your mind. And to get you to think about that just a little bit deeper, understand that we know this to a certain level. We, we don't say, am hand, am head, am body. You know, we don't say that. We say my hand, my body, my results. And we also say my mind. But we never answer that question of who are you? What are you? You know, I'm just going to kind of, I'm not going to answer that. I always have that feeling inside of me. This part of my programming that I want to answer that for you. But I don't. I want the, I, you know, I, I just want you to take that in and let that just go around so you can answer that question. Who are you if you are not all these things? You know, we say, my hand, my body, and my results, but we also say my name is Matt. That's programming that's in there. I don't search around in a Rolodex for my name when somebody asks me what my name is or they, you know, introduce themselves. But we know that there's a bunch of Matts out there. Your name is just words and sounds that you've been programmed to associate yourself or identify yourself with in this life, but it's not who you are. As I said, there's a bunch of other mats. And when we say, who are you? There's not a bunch of other yous, by the way. There's only one you. There's only going to be one you. There's never going to be another you. That's not just cheesy stuff. That's, that's the truth. So we think about this and we get into a system where we say, well, you know, society needs to be educated. And we go through school and we start to educate people as we put is we're going to educate them but we can go all the way through school 12 years of school 13 or 14 if you're like me for high school uh and we don't learn about who we are we learn very little about who we are and if you do learn about who you are you're learning it from somebody that's actually going outside of the curriculum because school the curriculum only teaches people memory teaches us how to live through our senses. As Bob says in real simple terms, he says, the teacher says, hey, would you look at here? Quit looking out the window. Pay attention to what's going on. And I've been guilty of this with my children too. You know, when they're off in La La Land, we got to go somewhere. Uh, getting us to pay attention to what's going on right now, you know, living through our see, hear, smell, taste, and touch right now. School only develops one of our higher faculties, and that's our memory. It doesn't work on any of the other ones that we actually use to create. We actually live on three planes of understanding. Now I'm going to go a little deeper into that, a answering that question for you. You've heard people say, I've, I had a spiritual experience. You didn't have a spiritual experience. You are a spirit. You are energy. And right now, you're having a physical experience. But understand that you are spirit. This rabbit hole is awesome. It's so fun to go down when you think about when you have a thought. What part of your brain, you know, told you to have that thought? So our brain is flashing signals and whatever it is that's going on up there. What part of your brain told you to have that thought? And we say, well, you know, she said something that made me to think that, but what part of your brain said it was okay to accept that message from her? What part of your brain said, flash those cells, flash those images on your mind? And if you think that it's a part of your brain that said to do that, then what part of your brain told you to tell that part of your brain? Think of original thought 
think of something that you love right now that you're just really in love with in your life. And something comes into your mind that says, okay, that that's, that's a thought I want to have this image. What part of your brain is telling you to do that? There is no part that's originating that thought. And that's you. That's the spiritual you that's experiencing everything that this is that you're working with. But that's that infinite you, that spiritual being that you are, that's having this physical experience as we put it. You have an intellect. That means you can think. Remember, things are neither good nor bad, wrong nor right, but thinking makes them so. Thinking makes things positive or negative for you. And just by using this wonderful mind, you're able to flip yourself into a vibration. Remember, we said everything is vibration. You think about turning on your car stereo, that's just vibrating the airwaves and it vibrates your eardrums, which flashes feelings, images, stuff in, inside of you and your mind. But that changes everything inside of you. You can be having a bad day and hear a song that you love and you change immediately. And vice versa, some songs can draw tears. It's just vibration. And the last part of your three planes of existence, three planes of understanding, is you have this physical body. Your body is not, hmm, how do you put it? It's not, it's part of the senses. We're always sensing our body when we're talking about fitness and things along those lines. But your body is just an instrument that you're using. It's an instrument of your mind. Spiritual, intellect, physical. By the way, if any of those are out of tune or out of whack, as we put it, life is not going to go well for you. We need to be taking care of all of these while we're here in our, our physical world. So you want to take care of your spiritual and get to know what it is, but you also want to study. You want to learn about you. You want to use your intellect and understand how to use your intellect, use your mind. And then, you know, if we don't take care of our physical body, you know, it's not going to go well for us. It doesn't matter how much, you know, spiritual or intellect stuff. If we're looking to live a long, happy, healthy life, we've got to take care of that physical body too. So the mind, the intellect, the mind is the greatest power in all of creation. What is it? Again, what is it? When we think of our mind, that's why this is so important. I want to take time right now and think of this. Just draw an image to mind when I say these words to you, okay? Your refrigerator. Your car. Your bed, your dog, if you have one. When you say, when you hear those words and you draw those images in, you actually have images flashing. So those vibrations come in through your ears and it tells your brain, fire these cells, and you actually start to see images in your mind. Now, if I told you, let's get a new refrigerator you would immediately start to picture, you know what, what color refrigerator do I want? Or let's paint your car. What color do you want? And you know the steps that start to take place and you start to get emotionally involved in that image and how that's going to happen for you so you can begin to move toward that right away. But the one thing that we need to change to change everything for us, to change our results in our life, when I say your mind, what image comes up? For some people, they might say, oh, you know, I don't know, I don't know, or it's the brain. You're not your brain. Your mind is not your brain. Your brain's just a part of the body. It's the electronic switching station that's helping you change your vibration. It's flashing memories and stuff, but it's not your mind. Your mind is actually in every cell of the body. And as we would say to go deeper, it's actually everywhere when we talk about your subconscious mind. And you know this when you felt like, you ever been in a haunted house and you got like just scared like crazy and you feel it down to like your fingertips and your toes? You feel all of your cells switch polarity really fast. That's the power of the mind. Mind will never be seen. It's an activity. We've dissected our 
Cuban body since the days of Leonardo da Vinci and all that stuff. And we've looked all over for what it was, was the mind was us and it's never found. But the brain was still there. And that's how we know that it's part of the body. But I want to run this past you too. If you think that your brain is your mind, what does your brain look like when it's functioning the way that you want it to function? And what does it look like when it's functioning in a way that doesn't serve you? It just looks the same, right? So we don't have anything to move toward. One thing you're going to find out, why do we set a goal in lesson one? It's because we're always designed to be moving toward something. We go back to your spiritual being. Your spirit is actually perfect. It's, there's no flaws in that, but it's seeking expression through your physical self. So you're always in a, a place where you're seeking something. That's why we're goal-oriented um, beings. That's why that that is the way that it is. So you're constantly in a state of seeking more and seeking more. So how does our mind work? This is where it all comes down into play. And, you know, it's a great conversation starter. It's a buildup. When you see this image, share it with people because it's, it's almost comical. I'm going to share the magical graphic with you, okay? What does it look like? There he is. He's that bobble-headed guy right there. This is the image, and it's, it really seems funny, and it's so nice when it comes down to how significant this was in Bob's life. This image brings order to your mind. And I'm going to show you about that and what that's all about and why you're going to look at the world in a different way when you understand what this image is. What I want you to take from this is I want you to take this information and I want you to apply it in your life and begin to think everything, you and the people that you meet in the, in the form of what we call the stick person or the secret genie. Because what this is going to do is give you an understanding of what your mind is doing when it's functioning right and what your mind is doing when it's not serving you. Eric said it very well today. He got on a call today and somebody told him to get lost. That's a nice way of putting it. But he, he understands his mind now that he's been studying this stuff. And by the way, Eric's into the full coaching. And that's why he studies this stuff on such a deep level. But he understands that before he didn't have this image. So automatically somebody telling him to do that caused him to feel a certain way. He didn't have control over that. He would automatically go into a vibration would, which would make the next phone call go this way or the next thing he did in his life. And it just became this downward spiral and this snowball they never had any opportunity or understanding of how to fix. But now that he understands this secret genie, he's able to flip that. He's a conscious competent. He's able to change that stuff in his life and stop it right there. <clears throat> so we take this magical graphic and we break it down. We draw a line right through the center. And we say that the top part of the, the bobblehead guy is the conscious mind. And the bottom half is the subconscious mind. And then everything else is just the body. So now what we can do is we can say, well, what are these things and how do they apply to me? Well, your conscious mind, that's where you and I are. That's where our senses are. I got to turn my fan on. It's getting warm in here. It's really heating up in the valley a lot quickly. Our conscious mind is where we are. That's what we say. We're conscious. We are consciousness. That's where our see, hear, smell, taste, and touch is. Um, our conscious mind, again, that that's you and I, has the ability to understand, oh, what tomorrow is or maybe what tomorrow will be. We've got imagination in there. We can imagine what tomorrow will be. That's why we're God's highest form of creation, because we can actually take that conscious mind and imagine something way out into the future. You know, not understanding that most of the time we use it in the negative. But the conscious mind understands the past. They said memory. It can go back and look at that. But the conscious mind can only pay attention to one thing at a time. That's it. It can only pay attention to one thing at a time. And we think that we're good multitaskers. And God knows that the world is telling us, hey, do this, do that, do this, do that. But we're not multitaskers. If I ask you to think about something that you love and something that you hate at the same time, I mean, literally think of those two things at the same time, you can't do it. You might be able to change the channel fast enough so that it seems like you're almost doing it, but you can't. And I know that. 
If I ask you to draw a circle with one hand and draw a square with the other hand, how's that gonna go for you? That shows you your multitasking capabilities. Unless you've practiced that over and over and over again until you've built it down into your subconscious part of your programming, you're not gonna be able to do it. You don't consciously drive your car. You subconsciously drive your car. You used to consciously drive your car in the beginning when it was so difficult. So the conscious mind is just kind of paying attention to what's going on. It focuses on one thing at a time. That's where our senses live. It has the ability to accept or reject. Now let's move on to the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is taking in everything all at once. It can multitask. It's, it's taking in all the information that is around. And here's the big deal about the subconscious. It can't reject. It can only accept. And it accepts based on one thing, something we call vibration, but a better word that you know vibration is feeling. Subconscious is where your programming lives that actually dictates what you're doing throughout your day. We call it habit. That's a powerful, powerful thing. 96 to 98 percent of your day is taking place due to habit, which means it's coming from your subconscious. It's based on a feeling about what you have in your life, who you are, the way you feel about the thing that's in front of you. We got into this with dance with Savannah. How many of you can dance so well in your bedroom by yourself? How many of you can speak with people very well when they're friends and their family or whatever the case is? But when you go into a setting and you go, I'm going to be the first one on the dance floor, us guys know that, and there's nobody out there, and my wife is saying, let's go, all of a sudden, I can't dance. I can't move the way that I can move when I'm all by myself. Public speaking, same. People know how to speak very well, but they go out and get into a situation where they're in front of a bunch of people. All of a sudden, these feelings start to come up from the subconscious about who you really are, and you can't speak properly. You can't do it properly. The last part here is the body. And I'm telling you a little bit about that right now. The body is just an instrument of the mind. It does exactly what the mind tells it to do. And where is that programming coming from 96 to 98% of the time? It's coming from the subconscious mind. Understand this right here, right now. Nothing comes up through the subconscious though. Nothing comes through the body. When it comes to thought and that energy that we have pouring through us all the time, it always flows from the top down. It's always flowing through conscious mind. One of the greatest things that we create right here in M3 Mastermind is awareness. We're not aware we say things, oh, I feel bad. Oh, I feel guilty about that type of stuff or I, whatever. But once you create that awareness, you understand that that's passing right through you and you're allowing that to pass through. You become emotionally involved with that. And that's going to cause you to take action in some way, shape or form. And by the way, inaction is action. When you think of people wanting to work out as I had the conversation today with somebody, when they get involved with, ah, this isn't going to go well and I don't like this. Or like Eric today, making a phone call, oh, this isn't going to go well, I don't like this. It will freeze people up. And they just won't do it. The subconscious starts sending all kinds of feelings that are just like, oh man, there's more things that are more important. That's not who you are. And that's feelings that we get involved with. But once you understand this, you understand that you have the ability to change it. How do you feel at the end of a call? No matter how it goes. Yeah, I made a call. How do you feel at the end of a workout? You're always glad that you did a workout. It doesn't matter how tired you are. Sometimes I'm crashed out on the driveway at 4.45 in the morning. I got my workout done and I'm just laying face down. I'm super tired and I couldn't be happier because I'm glad I got that done. Get involved in that thought. Think about you doing that and getting to that point that you're so happy and you lay your head on the pillow at night that you got your workout done. What does that make you want to go do? It changes your vibration right away. So the image that you see here, the secret genie, is it's something that brings order where there was chaos. And by the way, when we go back to the conscious mind, as we put it, it doesn't like chaos. It doesn't like to think about things hard, you know, like learning to speak a new language or whatever that you're doing that's outside of your norm of what we're doing. That's why our mind, we are habit forming machines. 
So the time that you spend doing something and getting better at it, the whole time you're building programming inside of you that makes it habitual, that's why it gets easier. That's why we get better at what it is that we're doing. So this image gives you the ability to now look at your mind. And when you, as we said before, you didn't have this image to refer back to. So if ever you ever stop to think about your mind, chaos kind of ensued. And so the first thing that we do is we reject that and we just go back to something else, you know, that's more comfortable with us, like scrolling on Facebook or something, whatever, you know, but it doesn't get us to where it is that we want to go. So this image brings order for you. It gives you the ability to now focus on your mind and see, is it serving us? It gives you the ability to gain an awareness and control over the thoughts that you think and understand how those thoughts are affecting the actions that you're taking body just the instrument of the mind it's just doing what your mind's telling it to do and it's a repeatable image that can be used to change any result you're unhappy with and remember this everybody's working with the same mind everybody kids are not different than us they're actually they get this stuff faster because they don't have all the years of programming in the subconscious kids lack two things it's experience and language that's it but they're working with the same mind that you and i are we're all working with it. Without this image, we have confusion and we naturally turn away from that confusion to areas that are more familiar. And the areas that you're more familiar is your paradigm. You haven't heard me say that yet, but your current programming that's getting you your current results. So it doesn't, turn, it doesn't serve us to go back to comfortable. We've got to get back to a place where we can start to understand what we're doing. And that's what we're doing right here. I think you guys can see why this was such a profound thing for Bob and why it's such a profound thing for me. When I see somebody, what this stick person allows me to do, it doesn't matter what that person's doing in my life. I understand everybody to be, however you want to believe, but I understand everybody to be that unique creation from God. That's, they are wonderful and unique. And it gives me the ability to love them just as they are. And it gives me the ability to take their programming and set it over here. Say, well, they might be doing something that, you know, it's trying to cause me unrest. But I, first off, I have to allow that to get down into my feeling or choose whether I'm going to get emotionally involved with that or not. And I can choose to not to. But what I choose to get emotionally involved with is that's just programming. And it takes that programming, what we used to feel was one thing. It was that person, you know, oh, they're just an a-hole or whatever you want to call them, you know, to label it so that your brain's okay with it. And it gives you the ability to separate and go, ah, that's just their programming. And I guarantee you, like Eric had talked about, people that are doing that when you're experiencing in that, that in your life from that person, they're doing that everywhere in their life. So they're not happy for a reason and they don't have any clue. They need that type of love and guidance to say, you know, are you happy with the results that you're getting? I'm sure the answer is no. A different way to think about the stick person is when you think about your conscious mind, you can also call it the thinking mind. And you can think about your subconscious mind. You can call it your emotional mind. That's your feeling mind. And then, of course, the body is the same. But if you choose to use different words, whatever you choose to help you to understand that stuff, I think that the, understand that you are coming from subconscious nearly 100% of your day, or you can say emotional mind, okay? So further inspection of the sick person lets us know that in our conscious mind, that is where our see, hear, smell, taste, and touch faculties live. That's where we're coherent of what's going on through the day, and we've been taught to live through these senses. But I want to bring perspective to what these senses really are and what they can do. They can only tell you what's going on right now and maybe a little bit about what's you know, happened in the past. But because we forgot how we actually learn and we forgot who we really are, we've been taught to live through these senses. This is where we get the thing that comes into play that says, you know what, I am a D or F student. We call it report card syndrome. And in a more drastic fashion, we've heard it put like x-ray syndrome. You know, you hear about the person getting the x-ray from the doctor and then they see that there's this thing that's wrong with them. And in a short amount of time, they expire. 
but then they go back and they look like x-rays 12 years ago and that same thing was right there and it didn't bother the person for 12 years that's where through the senses we get emotionally involved in something in a way that it doesn't need to have that power over us when we say to a child look at these grades you know you're a d or f student the child begins to become emotionally involved with that and so anything coming along that says hey i'm a good student I am, I, I'm an A student. They don't even see it. It's no longer in their conscious mind. They're not picking up in it in their senses because they've become emotionally involved in something that, you know, was shown to them through their senses. Your senses don't need to dictate your future any more than you let them. If I'm saying that, let me see if I can say that in a better way. They only have the power over your future that you give them. That's why we say it doesn't matter what you've done in the past. It has no bearing on what you can do in the future when you begin to understand who you really are and what you're working with. Stop living through your senses and start to learn how to use them as antennae for getting feedback in the world in terms of is that what I want or is that not what I want? Yes or no? Start to look at it that way and then you can take that information and become more emotionally involved in the things that you want and looking at life from that point of view of what it is that you want. So what is thinking down at its base core? And understand this, that mental activity, having thoughts that you're normally having, scrolling on Facebook, as I put it, why, even watching a movie on TV, you're allowing them to direct your thoughts. Mental activity, activity does not constitute thinking. You must direct your thinking on purpose. When we're living through our senses and we're talking about something that's happened to us, that's not thinking. We might be retelling a story of something that we don't want, but it doesn't constitute thinking. Real true thinking, and when you ask somebody this question, it gets them. What do you want? How do you want this situation to go? What do you really want in your life? If you could have anything that you wanted right now, and by the way, you can, what would that be? Build that image of you succeeding, success, whatever success is. That's thinking. That takes work. What does that feel like? What kind of interactions do I get to have with people? What kind of interactions do I get to have with my family? What kind of experiences do I get to have when I achieve the success that I want? You really have to expand outside of yourself to do that. And that's work. That's why a lot of people shy away from it. And another reason why people shy away from it is because they don't understand this information. They don't realize that that's actually conditioning you to receive it and teaching you how to send the vibration so that, that whatever that is, begins to move toward you in the form of attraction, like magnets. Most of the time, our mental activity is in harmony with our paradigm because that's what we feel most comfortable with. And thus, it's habitual and effortless. It's repeating of existing programming. Thinking is consciously choosing to build a thought and create an image deliberately in a form we desire that is new, it can be unknown to us. It can be some of the most challenging work we've ever done. I go to Jesus when I think about this type of stuff because I had, I never, you know, we see Jesus praying or whatever it was. I never really had an understanding of what that was. But now when I understand the stick person, what's really going on with that, I really get that what he was doing when you see an image of that, if it's a painting or something, he was doing some of the most profound work because you know that he was building an image of love. He said that above all these things, love one another. And he was always working to see whatever person was in front of him and including himself in the highest light, in the highest fashion. And imagine what that's like. That's some real work. And all you do is you see an image of a guy that's just sitting there. I actually have one on my wall here and it reminds me of that. Am I doing that regularly? Or am I just allowing the world to direct my thoughts? Turn on the news. So the key points from this, 
If you objectively view you or another person's behavior, you will understand what is going on in their mind. You understand the stick person. And you know what? I hope you guys captured a lot from that because the stick person, it's just something to look at and think about and just absorb and take in. It's going to give you an understanding of your world and the world of everybody else around you quickly. Vibration is a natural law of the universe. Everything is vibration. Everything. And you know that because when you get down to the molecules, the atoms, it's just vibration. It's energy vibrating at different states so that we experience it in a different way. But again, as I said, what you think you're seeing out here is solid is actually just light waves reflecting off of something that's coming into your mind. It's receiving vibration. Everything is vibration. Everything vibrates. Nothing rests. We live in an ocean of motion. Your body is a molecular structure in a very high speed of vibration. Your mind sets the vibration. Wrap your head around that. If everything is vibration and you've been given a tool with which you can control vibration, then what do you have control over? When you understand how to use it, you understand that you've got control over everything. You really do. You have control over everything that's showing up in your life and how you perceive it. Everything is vibration. Mind is the vibration controller. Pretty powerful, right? So let's take action so that this stuff doesn't just slip away. Truth resonates. When we speak truth, we go, wow, man. Yeah, that was right on the money. But it doesn't mean anything until we take action. Remember how the baby learned how to walk? He didn't do it by reading a book. He did it by getting up and falling down and getting up and falling down and going for it because the baby knew that it wanted to walk. Everybody else around him was walking and the baby said, I'm going to walk too, no matter what. We've got to take action. Begin by examining. And this is, this is, this lesson is more of, as we'd said in the beginning, it's looking at how you've been using your mind. And these things are going to help you find out what you've been thinking, how you've been using your stick person. Examine how you spend your days. If a disappointing situation occurs, do you react or do you respond? And they're different. There's a difference there. And neither one is good or bad, but, Reaction comes from your paradigm. It comes from your programming. So reaction is automatic. And if it's getting you results that you don't want, you got to take a step back and respond. Is this what I want? Stop and think about what you're going to do or what you're going to say. Eric, I'm using you as an example a lot tonight. And I know that you don't mind because you're great like that. But a reaction from Eric's old self might have said, hey, you F off, you know, to the other person and just totally dove into it. 100%. Like, right. But he stood back today and he said, well, I'm going to respond. And we respond and continue to respond in a way. It takes conscious thinking to do that. That's the right thing to do until that response becomes your automatic reaction. Why? Because that's what's going to get you the results that you want. I don't do that anymore. I don't get emotionally involved with that. I don't let anybody make me feel bad. Is it, somebody said that the other day. Does do you ever people ever make you feel bad? No, because I don't let them make me feel bad anymore. But I had to consciously do that. And that didn't come from strangers on the street, too. Those people, once I started to change my feelings, were people that were very close to me. This stuff, once you start to understand it and start to change what you are and what you're doing, you're going to change and you're going to experience some serious uncomfort for a while. When the people around you, you'll see, start to actually, they're the ones that can change that, that, that you have to respond in a way. You used to feel guilty, you used to feel shame, you used to feel bad in situations because that was my natural state, you know, in certain settings. We'll just call them family settings. How's that? Do you have difficulty staying focused on a project? That one's really powerful because when you dig down into it, you find that you've got programming that says, I don't have time. You've got programming that says, I'm never doing the right thing at the right time in there. And so that's what teaches us to change channels back and forth and back and forth in a project that should have taken 10 or 15 minutes of just really being focused. 
it, it won't even get done a lot of times because we've got this programming running around. So notice, do you have difficulty paying attention and staying focused exactly on what it is that you're doing? Can you give yourself permission to do that? Do you have an organized continuing education program? Powerful programming and that type of stuff right there. We understand that it's okay to go to school, go to college and get a degree and you get out and you don't get a job, but you get a big chunk of debt. But we do that because of programming and I'm not knocking on school. School is good. We learn a lot of good stuff in school. But when we ask ourselves, do I have a continuing education program for understanding myself? We're not familiar with what coaching is. And Bob says this. He says, in 60 years of doing this, I've never seen anybody make the massive shift of changing their life on their own. Why? Because we have programming that we don't do that. We don't guide one another that way. We don't help one another that way. That's not the way it's always been. Before college, in order to become whatever it was that you wanted to become, you actually went and, what, what was it called? I just lost my word right now, but you mentored. You stayed with that person for years. You would stay there and live with them and internalize what it was. Like if you wanted to be a blacksmith, you would internalize everything that that person did before you would go out and do it in the world. You would actually work right alongside of them. And then all of a sudden we got into education and we said, well, this is the way that we learn. We read, remember, repeat from a book, and then we pass a test. But then why do people hop out of college and they're like, man, I still don't know what to do with my life. Or why am I still having a hard time? It's because we've forgotten that stuff. We need a continued education program to understand who we are. And we need to work alongside of somebody who's able to walk us through that. What are your greatest strengths? Don't be humble here. Let it out. Those are your gifts. What are your greatest weaknesses? Do you intend to eliminate your weaknesses and which ones? And that matters when you answer that question, because when we think that we're an island and we've got to do it all alone, we're wrong. Answer your question from the point of view of what do you want to do? Jennifer, somebody's uh, not on mute. I can hear. Um, so you get to pick and choose. By the way, I want you to know as you're doing this stuff, you're the conscious creator the whole way through. So if you're saying this is success, but it's got to be hard, you're creating that all the time. And it's the same thing with your weaknesses. Understand we're all unique and wonderful. So where you are weak in something, somebody else will be strong in something. And that's wonderful because the two of you come together there and a person is able to use their gifts to complement your gifts and vice versa. Those are wonderful relationships that we get to have in our life. The only reason that you choose to eliminate weaknesses is because you want to. Other than that, understand that you're just going to attract the people necessary in your life to make that happen for you. List six habits this week that you will change. Just list them out. Once you understand this and you begin to observe yourself, list six things that you're going to change. What is the belief you have difficulty with that you would like to strengthen? Is it confidence? Is it courage? Is it, you know, is it guilt? Is it shame? Is it, what is it? Is it, is it your health and fitness? Is it your relationships? How do you feel about those things? Think of a very close associate or friend. What behavioral patterns do they have that could be considered annoying? This is kind of a cool thing. Now flip that and say, if that person were doing this exercise about you, what do you think that they would say? It really gives some perspective there, right? And remember, that's not who you are. It's just something that you do. Somebody told me a long time ago that you say, holy cow, too much. I don't think I say it anymore, but I never even knew I was doing it. What daily actions do you have that are habitual that ensure that you're moving toward your goal? Come aware of that. Guys, I created something called M3 Fast Tracker, and I had a wonderful meeting today with uh, uh, my good friend, Jeff, who um, I'm going to start sharing that with you guys. And I actually share in my accountability partner here, Eric Dahlberg, that we do this. Uh, we, we really work hard to do it every night because it puts in front of you exactly that. What is it that you need to do to move forward towards your goal? Don't let those things slip away. Put them in front of you and get learn to get emotionally involved with those so that you're constantly taking action in a direction that you want. 
when we live our day and it's just random and we let the day run us, that's never a satisfying and fulfilling day. Success is just the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. And every day you take a step towards something that you have defined that you want, you are successful. That's a happy, wonderful day. And you can't do that unless you're actually having those things in front of you and knowing what it is that you want to do. Remember, conscious mind only has the ability to focus on one thing at a time. And a lot of times those things drift by the wayside or we forget about them or we had a wonderful opportunity. Well, if you've got that thing listed in front of you, you can go right into action. That's it. Mic drop, done. Take further action. I'm going to put it in the chat right now. I'm going to send you all today's recording. And I want to encourage you, watch it again so that the stuff gets internalized. We've not been taught this stuff. So we need to hear it again and again and again so you can start to replace that programming. It's not serving you anymore. This is who you truly are and this is what you're capable of. And you've got to start to fall in love with that. You've got to start to internalize that. So watch it again. And I want to send you the article, Rules for Being Human. It's a beautiful little article. They don't even know who wrote it, but it's just a short little one to get you to understand more about that love of you and who you are in this awesome, unique uh, experience that you're having. I'm going to put that link in the chat. And that's it. We are open for chat and open for discussion. Next week, we're going into lesson five. It's the trick to using this mind and your higher faculties to stay in charge of any situation that's coming into your life. No longer do you have to be a victim of circumstance. You have the ability to create the solution to any challenge that's facing you. Matter of fact, it's there to draw that out of you so that you grow into that higher version of yourself from that.